Good morning, everyone. This is Merlin Gonzalez here at the Faith, Hope, and Love uh, headquarters here in Indianapolis. And I um, uh, just want to welcome you once again. We missed you last last uh, last time, but uh, let me just go ahead and close my door here. Here we go. So, um, yeah, so um, welcome again to, to Faith, Hope, and Love. Uh, today is Veterans Day, so we want to honor the, the veterans, those uh, the ones who sacrifice their their own lives uh many of them are uh, they volunteer you know um rather than being uh you know asked um to come but they volunteer to to invest in the future uh our, our future and also the future of our country our children and and um our children's children so we want to honor the veterans. Um, I couldn't imagine, you know, being uh, in, say, in the war zone uh, while, uh, you know, many of us here in the U.S., uh, sometimes we forget uh, the sacrifice that they do. So um, so let's start with prayer and uh, we'll include them in our prayer. God, we thank you for uh, what you're doing in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the veterans, Lord. The, uh, the people who invested their own lives, Lord, for so we may have freedom. And Lord, Lord this remind us uh, of your goodness to us, that you have sent your one and only Son to die for our sins so that those who believe and put their faith in Jesus will have eternal life. Uh, that's the, the ultimate sacrifice. So, Lord, uh, I thank you uh, for this day. I pray that uh, you guide us. Uh, as we are um, uh, discussing about your business. And uh, thank you for the Ministry of Faith, Hope, and Love uh, for allowing us to be part of what you do in our uh, midst. So uh, thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so um, I, I'd like to start uh, with uh, some, so a few announcements. Uh, last, last month, we actually had our first um, in-person table talk, and that was here uh, in this building uh, where Faith, Hope, and Love is, and uh, that's where we normally do before, uh, um, you know, COVID. So uh, we invited the churches who have food pantries, so it's a little different format, uh, who have food pantries and invite them to consider uh, repositioning um, their food pantries. Uh, and and uh, because again, with COVID, our lives have changed. And, and, and there are things now in our lives that if we don't change, we're, we're just gonna be run over, uh, not that we are in a race, but uh, in, in, in a sense that uh, the things that we do may be obsolete or um, things that uh, are not as important as before. So we have to take a look at things. Uh, one of those things is uh, the food distribution. You know, um, 10 years, 16 years ago, uh, we, you know, we started Faith, Hope, and Love. We'll talk more about that. And uh, we are continuously... Uh, redefining the deeper role of food pantries, especially now uh, during COVID or, and even post-COVID. So um, another thing, you know, uh, you probably received my uh, uh, regular email uh, if you do, but I share three new things to, uh, to, to most of you. Uh, first of all is that, hey, you, can, you probably can see I, I cut my hair, so that's a new thing, right? And, and second is uh, text for more. And this text for more is, is, is uh, a little different than text to give. Uh, we are familiar with those, but text for more is a microsite. So basically when you text, so if you get your, your, your phone, your smartphone, and, and you, uh, you go to your text app, and then, and then you enter the number 463, 
232-6780. Again, if you text, uh, uh, you know, you enter 463-232-6780, uh, you, and then in the message part, you put FHL Indy, that, uh, that's our, uh, you know, FHL Faith, Hope, Love uh, Indy, then uh, you will be sent another, um, uh, you know, message with a link that says that, uh, you know, you, when you click on the link, you will uh, go to our uh, microsite. And the microsite, basically, it, it's a website. And uh, that that website will, will uh, tell you more about what's going on. So, again, it's another tool for us for communicating uh, uh, to you. And, and, and the last, uh, that the other one is that, as you know, um, some of you, my close friends, my, my wife had a knee surgery. So uh, now she has new knee and she's in the process of recovering and, and healing. So uh, thank you for uh, your prayers for that. And uh, yeah, she has a new, um, new knee. And lastly, now, after these three new things that I sent to, to all of you, uh, there is also another uh, new thing, which is, uh, I put it on our Facebook, that, that a good brother in Christ uh, suggested, recommended me uh, to, to go to all expenses paid to uh, uh, Holy Land, to Israel. And I was selected, one of the few selected, and uh the only thing I need to come up with is my flight from here to New York and back and also some incidental expenses uh, uh, during my stay. It's uh, from December 5, no, December 6 through December 16. So uh, thank you. Uh, the, um, the organization that, uh, I, I mean, I never heard of them before, uh, not that it's bad, but uh, just to let you know, uh, God really knows that I need spiritual renewal. Uh, it's been 16 years since we started Faith, Hope, and Love, and ever haven't had anything like this uh, unextended um, outside the country uh, spiritual renewal. So uh, please be praying that the Lord will provide for the other expenses that that I will be needing uh, funding for that. So uh, those are the things. Uh, online training coming up this uh, January. Uh, we're, we're ramping up on this. Um, as, as you know, again, uh, what the, the first thing that we're reaching out are the churches in the surrounding counties in, of Marion County, Indiana, uh, and reaching churches with food pantries. And again, for them to take a look at the foundation that they build to reposition uh, maybe their, their, their food pantry and reaching out to uh, people beyond food. And, uh, and then the next one would be reaching out churches who don't have food pantry. And not that, you know, we, we want them to have food pantry. If they want to, they can. But at the same time, there are many ways so we can uh, use the same principle that we use for missional food pantry uh, in, in other outreaches. And we will talk more about that in the coming uh, weeks or months. Uh, with this also... Uh, the Lord had provided a uh, an, an organization that if you, uh, if your church, you know, right now within Indiana, the entire state of Indiana, if your church um, uh, uh, decide to take our training and to become a member of our network, there's a grant. Basically, it's it's it's. Similar to grant, but it's very short and it's not like competing with others. So it's basically requesting money and, and there's a, a grant that can go up to $15,000. This is what I heard last from one of the churches that we just trained uh, last month. Uh, the six Latino churches, one of them uh, started the process and, and she found out that uh, they can apply up to $15,000 dollars matching grant uh if you know they uh they because of the training and also being a network um 
HL Network Mission on Food Pantry. So that is great. You know, I uh, never thought about, about that. And so God is providing uh, as long as we are obedient and also, uh, you know, put our faith because uh, we sometimes we just need to take one step at a time. Uh, uh, take a note of this. If you are again in Indiana, if you are a clergy, a pastor, and you normally go to hospitals or other places to visit, Faith, Hope, and Love is now offering clergy badges. And that will be on our website soon. But I think we're going to put it first on our Facebook because that's easier to, to manage. And then at the same time, uh, we're, we'll be sending email uh, to you also with uh, the, um, the the brochure, uh, online brochure, so you will find out more about that. But again, clergy bad, it's, it's, it's more than just like visiting churches or visiting hospitals, but actually, you know, one visit. Uh, I remember a friend of mine, I went when he had an operation many years ago, and he never uh, forget it. He was still on drugs because of the pain and everything in the hospital. I visited him. And 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 uh, because of that visit, that meant a lot uh, for him. Also for me, you know, we were not close friends back then, but it made a big difference in his life. So again, uh, the clergy badge, uh, you know, uh, one of the benefits is uh, if you have this this badge, you can show it to hospital, and it's a free parking, and then they may allow you in certain areas that other people are not allowed to go. And even time so uh keep that in mind again that's clergy badge and then uh giving tuesday coming up this uh november 30th so um if you are thinking about uh giving uh during this uh season of giving uh please keep us in mind put us in your in your list uh for giving tuesday again that's uh november 30th and and we will use our text for more uh for the Giving Tuesday um, on that. Then the, the Thanksgiving coming up, of course, we all know that, uh, November 25th. So that's um, uh, a season of, of, of giving thanks. And um, we want to thank you for, for your support, for your continued prayers, and also uh, uh, giving thanks to, you know, one and only God uh, that have uh, is, is the provider of all things. Uh, so, uh, happy Thanksgiving ahead of time. Um, and then the next table talk is December 9th. So, again, I will be in Israel uh, during that time. So, I don't have the plan yet. I have to take a look at the itinerary. Hopefully, uh, I'll be uh, reporting live from Israel, not just um, December 9th, but hopefully in, in certain certain times of day. So I will be there again December 6 uh, through 15. And uh, if you would just, just pray for the things, the funding that I need, and also uh, uh, encounter with God every day, every moment that I'm there. So uh, and also safe trip. And uh, so that's those are uh, the things that I'd like to share with you. So, so here's, uh, let's go here. I invited many of you with regards to... Um, um, uh, this presentation, and uh, hopefully you you will see this on your on your screen. So um, let me uh, show you what uh, I'm going to present to you: uh, Missional Food Pantry, a community of uh, Missional Food Pantries. So uh, this is the one that I showed last last month at our table talk in person. But I'd like to show it to you, and you can share it also for the churches, and especially for some of you. I know uh, uh, there's somebody from uh, New York, uh, New Jersey area who would like to be part or maybe even a community developer in that area. So this is the presentation that I do that also not just for training, but also for those of you who haven't uh, seen this before. So um, mission trip in your own backyard is a sustainable mission without leaving home. And, and what does that mean? Uh, before I, I go to that, here we are, you know, Israel, right? So I'm really looking forward to, to my uh, trip to Israel. Uh, I actually have a joke on this uh, regarding this. 
So um, let me tell you real quick, uh, since I mentioned you. So there was a, a man and a woman uh, who went on a, uh, a tour uh, in, in the Holy Land. But unfortunately, you know, when, when they brought their, their, uh, his mother-in-law, um, while they were there, uh, she died. So the uh, undertaker came and, um, and then uh, asked the, uh, the, the husband and, and asked, hey, you know, uh, we can uh, ship your mother-in-law back to the U.S. for $5,000. And uh, or there's another option we can bury her here in the Holy Land. It's only f uh, for five hundred dollars. So uh, the, the husband thought about it and said, "No, uh, uh, let's ship the body back to the U.S." So the um, undertaker scratched his head and said, "Hey, that doesn't make sense. We're in, you know, Holy Land. It's it's very, uh, you know, a unique place and." For only five hundred dollars, we can bury here. Why send uh, the body back to the U.S.? And then he told the um, undertaker, "Hey, um, uh, I heard two thousand years ago that there was a man who died in this in in this place, and after two days, raised back from the dead." So and he said, "Well, you know, I cannot take that chance." So hopefully you got it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, how did Faith, Hope, and Love start? Uh, how did we uh, start Faith, Hope, and Love? So you can see there are, these are the different pictures that I had. Um, when I was in Costa Rica, I had a mission trip in Costa Rica uh, back in 2003, 2004. And, and as you can see, uh, we built a church there. And I visited, you know, some people there. We had worship. Um, and, and we travel in, in a place where there's no sewer, there's no electric, uh, you know, electricity before there's no sewer. So it was, uh, it was, uh, a really, uh, life-changing trip. And, uh, so I was transformed, but, you know, in order for me to go there, uh, I had to raise like between 3000 to $4,000. So it's, it's too much for one person to go on a mission trip. Uh, and then I thought, hey, you know, why do I raise this? And why do people go on a mission trip? That's because it's life changing. But, you know, we can have life changing event uh, right here in our own backyard. Right. And then also what I thought was that uh, for for uh, four thousand um, dollars, it's only for 10 days. And, and, and what happens is that out of those 10 days, two days were spent for transportation. You know, uh, that's because we have to fly and then we have to like five hours or six hours drive to up to the mountain. And then after that, uh, another day for the tour of the city, which is good. But, you know, uh, so so now we only are, are left with just seven days. And then they put me in a construction, which I never done any, you know, church construction before. And uh, so probably, um, you know, my contribution there labor wise was not um you know as much then if you calculate the money that i raise uh i spent over 50 percent of the money uh that, that that i raise and was spent for airfare board and lodging and then in some of uh, the international mission short-term mission sometimes they're not sustainable so i had a lot of questions after that because you know uh, i wanted to go back and, and for me back then, mission field is like a uh, going outside of the country, you know, going to the third world country, say to Asia, Africa, South America, and, and other other places. And and I always wanted, wanted to go, but I cannot raise the money. I didn't have enough money. Uh, but, you know, my question is that if this is true to me, that I want to help, I have the heart to help, but I have shallow pocket, this must be true for other people as well. So... Uh, so I started, you know, this uh, mission trip in our own backyard back in 2005. I uh, speak at my church, you know, after church service and invited some friends. And one of the friends uh, came uh, who later became a board member. So I, I explained to them 
you know, my uh, my experience. It was so great, mission, going outside, it's adventure, but it costs too much, uh, and then I want to go back. I didn't have enough money. Um, so what can we do? And, and, and how can we create opportunities for others who have the same situation as I am? And, and um, so he liked it, you know, having a mission trip right here in our own backyard, and, and it's not going to cost $4,000 per person, you know. It could be just like, hey, you know, however, how, however much you want to spend, and then you are on the mission field uh, right here in our own backyard. So afterwards, he said, yeah, I want to be a board member of Faith, Hope, and Love. And then he shared his story. He was one of... Um, maybe executive directors of a worldwide mission. And, and and this is true. This is what he told me. He said, hey, Merlin, you know, uh, I've been in this organization for many years. I travel uh, in many continents, in many countries. And at one time, I was sent to India, and we have the money, and we built, like, a community center there. They, they, they refurbish, uh, you know, the place. And, and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. And of course, people were happy, the locals, and that's great. They were able to help them. And and uh, after everything is said and done, so we went back to the United States. And after a year or two, of course, you wanna see the fruit of your labor. So he went back to this uh, small town in India and to his dismay, this is, this is what he told me, that the, the place was in worse condition than before they started this this community center and and there are many reasons and, and probably some of you already know uh sometimes when you go on mission field like like that uh they're, they're, they 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 start thinking about okay when when will be the next missionary group coming back so that we will have um um thing so somebody has told me that this screen was black so hold on just a second is the screen black huh wow um so i don't know why the screen is black um so let me let me sh um see here uh why this screen is black um i thought i was sharing it uh to all of you um so Okay, um, technical difficulty, right? So maybe this one will show. Uh, so um, let's let's go to um, to a mission trip. Okay, good. So it's good now. Um, so what if there's a mission trip that will not cost you thousands of dollars? You know, uh, again, we have mission trip right there in your in our own backyard, and then uh, what if? Uh, there's a mission trip that you will need no passports, right? So um, there are a lot of family members out there who would like to come. You know, what if there's a mission trip that's sustainable and leads to social transformation rather than just like, you know, providing stuff and then not in, maybe not involving uh, and engaging the people, then, you know, what, what, what happened? So, uh, and then what if there's a mission trip uh, that your entire family, your entire congregation, or maybe you have a company or, or you have co-employees who would like to serve together, that will be great, you know, especially now uh, with COVID, a lot of people want to be part of, of what's going on. And, and then, uh, so you can serve together and at the same time, develop a uh, friendship team building you know a lot of companies are spending a lot of money for team building this is another way that we can do that uh and then what if there's a mission trip that eventually creating a community focus on mission so again this is a the the the, the um 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 we call this this is the concept of, of missional community missional community is engaging the people you know you probably heard of, of uh, i think it's an african proverbs that you know it takes a village to raise a child so the same thing for us not one organization has all the answer and all the funding and all the expertise but god has provided and scattered resources surrounding us so um and 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 that's focus 
on mission, a community uh, that is uh, working together, a, uh, you know, say a mission by the community for the community. So um, what about, uh, you know, uh, in Acts 1.8, this is what Jesus said, um, you know, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So, you know, did he say you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth and then to Jerusalem? You know, uh, so that's obvious. What Jesus is, is saying that we will be witnesses. We will go on a mission uh, first in our own backyard in, in Indianapolis, just like here in, in uh, you know, in faith, hope, and love, or wherever you are, whether you're in New Jersey or where, whether you are in Texas, start, you will be witnesses, start in your own backyard, then maybe in your state, then maybe in your region and uh, United States, and then to the ends of the earth. So this is incongruent uh, with regards to Acts 1.8. And then what if uh, you um, uh, have, um, let's see here, so what if you turn uh, the food pantries into mission hubs? So many of our food pantries right now, of course, you know, what is a food pantry? By definition, it, you provide food, right? It's food distribution. It's, it's giving away food, free food, free good give, giveaway. But what if we turn it into a mission hub? And that's why the name of this, um, um, you know, um, Tabletop is, sorry, I'm, I'm looking at, at my, um, my notes here. This table talk is about uh, turning um, food pantries into places of, of wonders. Can you imagine that? Places of wonders. And, and we can do that. So let me show you uh, a river of hunger one. Some of you have seen this before, so hopefully... Uh, this will um, uh, work out. Um, so this is the river of hunger. I wrote this uh, back uh, in um, probably five years, seven years ago when I was on vacation at uh, in Louisiana and I was by by a river, you know, by a lake. And I thought about this concept that has been brewing in my uh, in my mind. So um, watch this. The River of Hunger, a parable of the evolution of today's food pantries. Once upon a time, there was a river of hunger in which many were drowning. Whenever those on shore would see one of these struggling people, they would pluck them out of the river and provide them with emergency food assistance. Soon, because of the large number of people being rescued from the river, a supplemental emergency food assistance system was developed in the community and food pantries were established and rapidly increased in number. Among these were churches whose well-intentioned ministers recruited volunteers to serve at the pantries and some even to move and live in the needy community. The community grew and settled into the business of delivering emergency food assistance. One day, someone wondered why there were still so many people in the River of Hunger, many of them repeats, and decided to go against the current to see what was causing them to fall into the river in the first place, and then to fall back into the river again after being rescued. Was there a way to prevent this unusual occurrence, thereby reducing hunger and the associated cost to individuals, families, communities, and society? By focusing on what can be done to keep people from falling again and again, food pantries must move beyond just handing out food to missional approach since many of the food insecure population live in preventable circumstances. It's time to move merely from transactional to relational. Jesus taught us to find out the real needs of people, which means investing time in those people in his conversation with an untrusting person at a well, Jesus pointed the Samaritan woman to what she really needed and how she could get it. He met her at her point of need. 
Although she came to the well to quench her thirst, she learned of the living water, the only thing that would truly quench her thirst. Similarly, at food pantries, most people come to receive free bags of food. Many of us have been involved in just giving people what they feel they need, food, rather than trying to uncover the their underlying real need of education or training or healthy living or an encounter with God. If we would rescue people, it is imperative that we become missional workers by serving people with God's perspective. We can help many people avoid falling into the river of hunger over and over again by helping them beyond a bag of food. By slowing down the process of food distribution, we can actually shorten the line. All right, so we're we're back uh, again. So hopefully, uh, you see the implication on that. I actually. Um, uh, I took the, the same uh, uh, principle of upstream thinking when I wrote that. And um, so there are some comments. Before we continue, I'd like to uh, address some of the comments here uh, to all of you. You know, Keisha, thank you for, for watching. And uh, Edith, uh, that's a, uh, what a blessing to, to have you here. And um, so let's continue again with... Uh, uh, with our uh, presentation here. So let's see if I can uh, put this together again. Hopefully you will see that. So what's the difference, right? What's the difference between a traditional food pantry and a missional food pantry? So first of all, for the traditional food pantry, the emphasis is on giving food. For uh, the, the missional food pantry, the emphasis is on God and people. And we just don't have the time now to take a look at uh, Mark 12, 30 to 31, but just uh, you, you can actually review this later on because I, I know I'm going fast on this one. So you can take a look at that at your own leisure. But again, that's that's about the great commandment, loving God and loving people. If we take care of those two uh, commandment, Jesus is saying that we can take care of the rest of the 10 commandments because everything that's the foundation is loving God and loving people. So it's not more than just transactional, right? Which is what uh, sometimes, you know, food pantries, because they are so busy, long line, it becomes like became like a transaction. People are like, uh, you know, waiting. And then just to process that, then there's no relational. But with the uh, missional food pantry, it's relational. And you can take a look at Philippians 2, 14 to 16. And uh, perhaps, you know, in the future, we can talk more about this, uh, what, what that means. But basically, it's more of relational. And then next, uh, the difference uh, with uh, traditional and missional food pantry, normally organized by one organization. Nothing wrong with that. But again, uh, many organizations, especially now, what they're saying is that there might be some... Uh, it's going to be harder uh, to, to acquire uh, food now, you know, and, and we know that not just in biblical terms, but in, uh, you know, real terms, which is, you know, the, the supply chain, you know, where, where is it now? And then um, next is the, um, you know, missional food pantry. Um, let me make sure that, that I got, it is right. Okay, that's right. Okay, so on uh, the missional food pantry, it's building missional community. We talked about that earlier. So everyone gets to play. What does that mean? That means that that in a church, you know, in a church, uh, people would like to give away food. There are some people who would like to pray. There are some people who would like to do administrative, just like data management. And why data management and analysis is very important, that's because with the data management, we can actually pinpoint the, the, the real needs of our community. And in that way, we don't just have to, to uh, uh, guess what's the need in the community. So say, for example, uh, with the data management, we provide you, uh, you know, an Excel template, and also soon it will be cloud-based. So once you log on on that, you're going to enter the data such as 
the age, the race, the the uh, number in in you know in a household, uh, what other benefits they are receiving, and and maybe on the prayer request we'll find out that maybe the person or or the client need uh, more education or maybe need some counseling such as maybe addiction counseling or or maybe some some other things. So now once we find out all of those, then we can uh, refer them to other places. So that again, it's more than just like uh, trying to uh, treat the the symptoms, but actually providing cure to uh, to the actual uh, sickness or you know in a, in a good way. All right. So hopefully you get the the thing there is that you just don't put bandage on the same one over and over again. So with that, I uh, would like to, to show you another uh, a story from the mission field. This is from a pastor that we trained a few years ago, and you and he will sh uh, share with you uh, uh, his experience. And this is uh, his experience after we train them. This is uh, Pastor Mario Elcock. My name is Pastor Mario Elcock. I am the proud pastor of Mount Nebo Missionary Baptist Church in Indianapolis, Indiana. The Lord brought me and uh, Pastor uh, Marilyn together. I am so delighted and peacock proud to be a part of Faith, Hope, and Love uh, missionary, Missional Pantry. And I'm just thankful there for the uh, for the help that uh, the uh, Faith, Hope, and Love provided us. The table talk, it was amazing uh, of, of the resources that was provided around the of Indianapolis for the uh, food pantry. And I was able to meet other partners there that was able to uh, pour into me the things I needed to do. Uh, the church caught on fire. We was able to have at least uh, 18 of our church uh, uh, members to join to be a part of the orientation process, which is intense. And if you don't have a commitment to see it, see it through, uh, this is not the place for you. Uh, it's a humbling experience. The model is set. Uh, the model is wonderful. This is a missional food pantry. It's not just we are dealing with just food. We're dealing with a spiritual entity that we as a society need. We had our grand opening, and it was a very successful where we was able to feed, uh, uh, not feed, but uh, uh, minister to 43 families. Uh, at that particular time. And out of the 43 families, nine souls came to salvation. That is a wonderful testimony. All right. Uh, so let's um, let's go back. Uh, so, hey, uh, Ted McGrath, when I first started, uh, online, uh, hold on I, a started second. I know that that's what's going to happen with, with my uh, iPhone. This. All right. So hopefully uh, you get the, the idea there that uh, Missional Food Pantry, that's what we talk about, it's, it's, it's different. You know, it's redefining what a food ministry, actually it's not a food ministry. I call it people ministry because the number one uh, uh, client that we have are the people first inside our church or, or the volunteers. And you may be wondering, what are you talking about? I thought the clients or the recip the recipients are number one customers. But I tell you what, you know, uh, a, a good example is Jesus. You know, he trained his disciples first before he left the earth so that they can expand it. He did not just do it himself. And, 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 and sometimes we fall into getting so busy, all of us doing all those things, and then and then after we leave, then, you know, it's not sustainable. But again, uh, our number one customers, and that's why we, we give so much importance in training, because if you don't train, it's just like a business. You know, why do we interview uh, people who have like higher education or, or more experience or, or better trained individuals so that we will have successful business? And the same thing as in, you know, um, food pantry or other uh, nonprofit organizations. Sometimes uh, we, 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 we keep tight, you know, in the funding for training of our people, but they are our greatest assets. I tell you what, they are our greatest assets. Without people, you don't have food pantry. 
you may have food, but you don't have people. So, and I've seen this uh, in the past. Uh, that's what happened in the past, uh, even in probably a couple of our food pantries that we train, they revert back to just food distribution. So what happened, the vision was lost in the business of food pantry. And very soon, the volunteers start leaving. So they actually, um, you know, close the food pantry, not because of lack of food, but because of lack of people. So um, let's let's go back again to... Um, to the mission trip in your own backyard, the river of hunger too. So, so now think about, uh, so again, the river of hunger, people just keep drowning, going back only to be pulled back again by the same people over and over and over again, right? So we need to understand why people are, are drowning, why people always fall back in the same river and being rescued by the same people. So let's take a look at uh, th this. And this is the second, um, parable that I uh, created together with a an intern. I told him about, hey, you know, because we, we work a lot with interns here. And I, I, I told him what I would like to project here, the story. So watch this. Once upon a time, there was a mysterious river, the river of hunger. The river flows swiftly in the middle of a busy town. It wanders in residential, business, and recreational areas. It is dark and murky, yet one can see the reflection of the entire community as residents frolic and gather by the river. Many misjudge the violence of the river and become swept up by its undercurrent. One day, a man discovered the cause of the river's fury and what was leading people to be snatched back in after they had already been pulled out. He learned that there were many pitfalls along the river, that many of the individuals in the river were not aware of themselves to identify the mistakes that led them to be pulled back in. He came to the city and revealed the true nature of the river to the community. This caused the people to realize that their current system was not working. They recognized that the pain of hunger is experienced in many ways, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Although food is a basic human need, it is not the only answer to alleviate hunger. Many factors contribute leading to hunger, such as relationships, economics, education, society, and culture. Beyond the pain of hunger is a person's perspective of who they are in God. The community remembered what the good book says, not to conform to the system of the world, but to be transformed by becoming aware of what's been available all along. Food available, sufficient resources, and people willing to help. The community gathered in unity and decided to tackle the river head on. They ran the greedy out of town and worked with the caring and broke down the silos and erected unity. They worked together to empower the people rather than enable them and became a generous and loving community. As the community implemented their new programs, the citizens of the city began to work together and the once murky waters became crystal clear the river was transformed to be life-giving and continued to flow impacting other neighborhoods wow isn't that great uh so uh, that that is a um you know, I, I'm trying to paint a picture that the reflection of a city is a reflection of the community. And what do I mean with that? Is that the healthiness of, of you know, the, the city, of our community is in direct proportion with the people, the residents living there. So whether people are hungry for food or, or hungry for a relationship or hungry emotionally, or whatever it is, it's the reflection. So, you know, we can deal with, I believe, this is what I believe, because this is what the, the great commandment says, loving God and loving others. We can take care of hunger by loving God and loving others. We can take care of crime, which is now, you know, Indianapolis broke the, the um, you know, for second year in a row, the number of, of violent crime in Indianapolis. You know, I'm not proud of that. You know, I live here. 
but that's what's happening. We cannot put more police in the street. You know, that's that's been happening. But I think at the core of 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 the residents, that relationship, it's not transactional. It's just like, hey, you know, here's the food and then we'll see you next week or and, and then we'll put like like a security camera or, or whatever and things are going to take it take it because we deal we deal not with material things but we deal with emotions we deal with with relationship we deal with people so we can talk more about that but um that's that's a reflection of the city is the reflection of of its residents so now i'd like to show you mr charles and and mr charles um was a uh, a client uh, a recipient at uh, the the food pantry missional food pantry when we were conceptualizing this and uh this was back in 2015 or when we were progressingly uh you know on this so let me show you what mr charles uh testimonial is all about i came to the pantry and they let me have the free food and they prayed with me right after their prayer people start coming out of the woodwork helping me i received a job i received the food i received a lot of help every time i turn around i got help and the guy bring me up here twice as a favor you know hey you going up there to get some food i can't give you no money for no food but i can take you up there and then i told him i was looking for a job and so about the second time he brought me up here, he offered me a job. And I took it. I found out that it was rewarding. I like it so much that I'm going back to school to study biology. I'm getting ready to volunteer for faith, hope, and love. They help me. I, in turn, help them. I think that's very uplifting. So that was uh, Mr. Charles, and um, and that's what that's what I think uh, turning food distribution into places of wonders instead of just places of 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 receiving food, because there are hungers, you know. There's hunger that's beyond food. You know, as 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 the uh, the Bible says, you know, and even Jesus said that said this when he was uh, at at the Mount of uh, Temptation, when he was in, uh, being tempted right after he was baptized. The devil came and said, "Hey, you know, you can turn the bread. I mean, this is stone into bread." And Jesus said, "No, man does not live by bread alone, but for every word that comes from the mouth of God." And that is the main thing, you know? The main thing is what God is saying and what God had promised. It's not just like he's saying, but those are his promises. And if we follow his promises, if we put the major thing, the major thing, not the minors, if we invest more, our effort, effort our money, our funding, our, 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 our assets, our resources to what's more important, I think we will be able to be surprised by God. I mean, God is, is a God of wonders. And, and again, if we focus on those things first, then I, I believe that we will be able to, to alleviate hunger uh, beyond just, just bags of food. So uh, I have some more that I wanna show you, show you here, which is this one is like a um, food pantries uh, from COVID, uh, you know, and beyond, but, uh, we just don't have the time now uh, to show this to you. So um, perhaps next time I can I can show that to you uh, because we're running out of time here. But uh, we did an extensive um, um, research as far as you know effects of COVID in everyday places, uh, and and uh, we worked with two one one, which is a referral place here in Indianapolis, and. Uh, um, but anyway, uh, we can do that uh, later on. So um, let me show you that the last thing here is that uh, I'd like for you to, to remember this. 
uh, let me make sure we we have this thing here that uh, we are um, remember that you have the power to bring kingdom solutions and resources to the world problems and challenges. So again, let me just share that with you. We do have the power to bring kingdom solutions and resources to the world problems and challenges. And God had given us the Holy Spirit uh, to, to be able to do that. So uh, I know you may have some questions, you may have some comments. We still have um, 10 minutes here. So I'd like to address some of the things that, that's here uh, on the comments. If you have some questions, some comments, uh, I should be able to hopefully answer all of those. Thanks to Kisha. Uh, Kisha actually is working with, with us also. She has her own uh, nonprofit and, and had uh, extensive experience in, uh, in helping uh, the underserved individuals uh, through education. So she's um, helping us as far as identifying churches who may not have food pantry. And then we will show them how we can be of assistance to them. So Kisha, thank you for coming over. Uh, and then uh, also we have uh, Edith Mercedes. Uh, she's actually from um, uh, from New York, uh, New Jersey area. And she's the one that I mentioned to you that uh, is uh, very, very interested into becoming a, a coordinator in the New York, uh, New Jersey area, uh, a Faith, Hope, and Love coordinator. Of course, Donna is here, uh, has been with us for a, a long time, and uh, we get new comments here. Uh, so Donna mentioned that uh, it's very fruitful to be able to speak uh one-on-one -on -one with, with those that came in off the streets and share hope and pray and very fruitful and privileged to see someone make a decision for the Lord. It, can you imagine that? You know, uh, and I share this with you, you've seen it on our Facebook, that when we open, when we look at some of the resources available, I saw a burning bush, basically, which is Starbucks in Castleton here in Indianapolis uh, last year. And, uh, and what happened was that I spoke with the executives of um, uh, Starbucks and um, they provided us the use, the free use of the building, which is like $7,500 a month rent. Plus they pay for the utilities also. So that's almost $8,000 a month that they provided from May until uh, January last year. But from May till, till, till December, we had 300 salvations. So who would ever think like in a secular building like that, that there will be 300 salvations? This is not just like one super evangelist preaching to thousands of people and then people start coming forward and making decisions for Christ. Although that's good, but this one is one-on-one -on -one presentation of the gospel. And really it's a personal thing, just like what Jesus did with the Samaritan woman at, at the well. He took his time to, to really understand what this individual was thirsty for. And what she found out is that she's thirsty for God. And I'm not saying that everyone who go in the food pantry do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that. But we are all broken people, right? So we, we, we leak spiritually. And what happens is that we need some people who would encourage us and, and help us uh, along the way. So, um, and, uh, so Kisha, you know... Um, Thank you for, for um, you know, joining us. So do you guys have any more questions? Uh, I'll keep talking here. We only have five more minutes or six more minutes here. And uh, we'll use the entire one hour here uh, to address any questions, any suggestions, any ideas that you may have. Uh, so while we're waiting for, for some of your, your questions, uh, keep in mind that this will be, uh, you can watch this this. Uh, again, um, over and over, and you can actually share this with others who were not able to, to join us. Uh, actually, the live, uh, we have less uh, views during the live, but we have, you know, multiple times uh, when after it's finished, because they um, many of you share it, and then they share it, and then you can actually, um, you know, take, take uh, you know, this concept and and uh, Kisha said that what a grateful 
to be part of the movement. Well, you know, we are grateful also uh, for you to be part of, of what's going on. So, so again, here's is what, uh, you know, in, in the next few minutes here, I'm going to uh, give you just a short vision of, of our uh, uh, organization. It has been my, my, my vision uh, many, many years ago to put our, our teaching online so that we will be able to reach not just one church or six churches at a time for the conference, but we can reach multiple simultaneously different different churches in different states by who? By you. You know, we're looking for community developers in in different parts of, of the country because we already have a, a proven method of proven teaching that has been uh, proven for many, many years. And, and, and that's going to be online. So all you have to do, the first thing is that strong Christian. That's all. Because we will provide the, what, what I call the product or the teaching, which is the online training that we've been using and upgrading all throughout the years for over 10 years. Over 10 years, we've been, we've been doing it so that uh, if, if a person in California, you know, uh, want to do it, it will be simple. If you can click, open a computer, click, and then show the video and, and, and things, we will have more tutorial about that and also the concepts that we have, then you can reach the nation. You can reach uh, the, 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 uh, the churches in, you know, in the entire nation, maybe in, in the world, uh, by, by showing uh, our teaching. And with that, can you imagine, you know, there are 60,000, this is what they said, there are 60,000 food pantries right now in the entire United States. If we can turn, say, maybe 10% of that, that's, that's 6,000. And each, if each of them have like 100 salvations a year, okay? So for a year, 100 salvations a year, how many, how many is that? But at the same time, it's providing the, the emergency assistance while also working on sustainable health uh, to, to everyone. So, um, so this is, uh, well, Kishia, how long does it take to get the church up and running with your sustainable uh, method? Uh, it depends, you know, with our new system, it could be probably six weeks uh with that uh, because again it takes work we're talking about not just food distribution but actually sharing the gospel because we are a christian organization and again our main focus is uh, loving god and loving other so this will work in small congregations also um because this is scalable so for those of, of you you know what is scalable that means that you can uh, use this method in like a 10 member congregation or a thousand member congregation it doesn't matter because it's scalable we you can choose to to serve a few people or you can choose to serve hundreds of families depending on the capacity of your congregation and then another one would a church wants to implement this to be able to bring other churches on board sure yeah this is the concept of missional uh, community which is like one church, you will have the food there, and then you can include other churches, and then other churches will provide food, volunteers, other resources. So now you will have a community that is focused on mission. So those are uh, great uh, questions, uh, Kishia. So uh, we only have one minute here. So, uh, you know, think maybe I should do this because I have another slide here that I want to show you. Uh, let me show you this real quick. Uh, this is the slide that I want to show you, um, you know, from uh, uh, COVID. Um, I don't know if, if you can see this, but again, this is about uh, the, the state of, of food pantry before COVID and, and, and after COVID. So uh, I'll, perhaps we can do that uh, next time. So... Um, I, I would like to, to thank all of you for, for joining uh, uh, this, this segment of our uh, table talk and um, just keep in touch. Uh, we may do the, uh, the other slide here uh, about uh, the state of the food pantries pre-COVID, 
during COVID and maybe post COVID uh, down the road. Because we had interns here, we had actually 14 plus seven, it's like uh, 20 uh, interns here at one point, and, and they are helping us to do all the research. So uh, let me just end in prayer and um, uh, you can continue um, you know, doing some comments here on our Facebook and uh, we'll uh, make sure that we address those questions. Lord, we give you thanks today. Thank you for uh, this segment of Table Talk. Lord, that it's just been since 2015. It's been over six years that we've been doing this month after month. And thank you for your provision. Pray, Lord, that uh, the, the seeds that were planted today, Lord, that you, that some of them or many of them may fall on 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 fruitful ground so that it will produce fruit not just not just good teaching but also it will be turned into action and will reach more people for christ thank you for your love your grace in jesus name amen god bless you all and we'll talk to you later